There are many hospitals in Britain today devoted to the care and cure of crippled children, but one of the first to be founded, and still one of the most important, is the Lord Mayor Trelaw Cripples Hospital and College. Between four to five hundred children come here every year from Britain and overseas. Crippled boys and girls likely to benefit from treatment are admitted up to the age of 16. Most of them are children crippled by diseases acquired in childhood or suffering from deformities at birth. Here is a child brought to Trelawas to find health and strength. On their admission, they go to an observation ward for a period of quarantine. Two of the doctors have made their examination of little Maureen she doesn't seem to have found it very alarming. The doctors are followed by the head teacher, for while this may be a hospital, it is a school too, and during their stay, the children go on with their schoolwork in the usual terms. Their education is unbroken in spite of a spell in hospital. The X-ray room is a link between the remedial and the surgical departments. The X-ray photographs reveal the effects and extent of the disease invisible to the human eye. The X-ray has shown the need for an operation, and the honorary surgeon examines the plate while sisters and nurses prepare the theatre. The theatre has full modern equipment. The operating table has been specially designed for children's needs and can be adjusted to any required position. Lighting is by a single lamp which casts no shadows under the surgeon's hand. This air conditioning plant gives the best aseptic conditions. Vitally important in all operating theatres is the sterilising equipment. This is one of the recessed type. Over 600 operations of 50 different types were successfully carried out here last year. After an operation, the patient goes to a special recovery ward. Another important department is the plaster room for many of the patient's limbs must be supported both while they're still in bed and later when they're well enough to get up. Here, Sir Henry Gavain, the medical superintendent, is making a plaster cast for a child's hip. The bandages are prepared by spreading plaster of Paris on muslin strips dipped in water before being applied, after which they harden almost at once. Sir Henry Gavain has been the medical superintendent since the hospital was founded by the late Sir William Trelaw in 1908 and the impressive number of cures that have been effected since that date is due in a great measure to his untiring devotion to the children under his care. When the bandages have hardened, the cast is cut off and a model made from it. This is fined down until it is quite smooth. And then it is covered by coats of muslin and painted with a solution of celluloid in acetone. The model is now ready for the splint to be made. The splint is made in the hospital's own orthopedic workshop managed by an old college boy. Over 4,000 surgical appliances needed by the hospital have been supplied by this workshop. Trelaws has its own iron lung or drinker apparatus. This instrument is vital for the treatment of children whose respiratory organs have been impaired by infantile paralysis and a special staff trained in its correct use is always available day or night. On being sealed inside the lung, the patient is made to breathe by a regular alteration of air pressure. The air presses on the patient's diaphragm and thus brings about an involuntary emptying and filling of the lung. The inspection port shows how the machine itself breathes for the patient. In this light department, science plays a different but equally important part. Here, artificial rays of various types are used to combat skin diseases and other ailments.
Finson arc combat some types of disease. Tungsten arc, others, particularly tubercular glands. Radiant heat channel turns up paralyzed muscles. Does he feel toned up? Today, Maureen, convalescent from her operation, is being brought out onto the terrace for the first time. The hospital is designed so that natural sunlight can be used to the fullest advantage. Beds are taken out on the great terrace fronting the wards, and there the children can sleep, play, and eat. Another important branch of the hospital's work is carried on in this treatment center. After months or perhaps years in bed, rehabilitation is necessary. The children are brought up from the wards in electric trolleys and taken into this exercise room. Muscles must be strengthened and children taught to use their limbs again, even how to walk. Most of these exercises are done to music. This is an exercise for muscle coordination. And this for correcting a spinal deformity. This machine helps the cripple's first attempts to walk. And these exercises strengthen backs and legs. Massage is given by sisters and nurses with special training in this type of therapy. The hospital vamp is privileged to take her donkey anywhere, even into the pool room. The exercise pool is used for children whose limbs are too paralyzed to be moved against the bedclothes. Warm water supports the limbs and the child is encouraged to make the first small movements which in time will be increased. This form of treatment is naturally very popular with the children. The children spend a large part of their lesson time in the open air. Primary and secondary school education are both given. The children are grouped in wards as far as possible according to their standard and ability so that a ward becomes a class. At the same time, tuition is given to each child individually, and each child is encouraged to get on by itself. Thus, the pace of the class need not be that of its slowest member. For the under fives, there are special toys. They're learning to work things out for themselves. For those more nearly cured, lessons are right out of doors whenever possible. The cripples' tendency to feel that they are cut off from ordinary life is counterbalanced by their opportunity of mental development and the companionship of Trelawes prevents the patient from becoming lonely. This youngster has spent nearly four years in hospital. He's cured now and will be going home soon. And when he gets home, everything will be done to see that the cure is permanent. School medical service officials keep a kindly eye on every child discharged from Trelawes or from any other of the hospitals for crippled children. Allied to Trelawes is the training school and college. Here, crippled boys may learn a trade. In this tailoring shop, they are taught by an expert and many first-class workmen have been turned out. Some of the boys now own their own businesses. Only their early training here has made that possible. In this shop, the boys are taught bootmaking and repairing. As with the tailoring shop, the hospital is the chief customer. Here, they do all the repairs and make all the surgical footwear for the hospital and for 14 other orthopedic clinics in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Trelawes is the largest hospital school of its kind in the British Isles. Since 1908, over 10,000 children have been treated. Over 9,000 have been discharged with their disease completely arrested. In one recent year, every patient suffering from tuberculosis of the knee was cured. Of all the children treated today, over 90% are assured of a cure. The crippled child need no longer be a lonely outcast. The cripple can be cured. That is the spirit of Trelawes, left behind by a man who loved children.